Shalom, shalom. Salaki, I had to cut the video real quick, um, but I'm continuing on. All right, so that word means uh, from transform, it's metamorpho. And we know the, the Greek word metamorphosis, uh, not the Greek word, the word metamorphosis comes from metamorpho. All right, and we understand metamorphosis is when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. Okay, they transform, they become a new being. All right, and that's like in the process that we're on right now. Okay, from going from being carnal men, but being transformed into spiritual men. Okay, being transformed onto the sons of the heavenly Father. Okay, and how are we being transformed? By the renewing of our mind. Okay, by by getting diving deeper into this word, and and getting closer onto the onto that Most High, man. All right, now let me go back to uh, Matthew. I want to continue reading in there. All right. This is Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 16. And I read 24. I'll read that again. It says, Then said Yahweh shy unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. All right, so what? If, you, if you're out here trying to save your life, all right, and not being, not being a man, not being a soldier, and sacrificing your life for the Lord in order to please the Lord, okay? When the Lord comes, you're going to lose your life anyway. All right, so what, what's, the, what's the point? All right, it says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Like, you're going to lose your soul, man. This world is going to pass away. All right, so you might as well do something that's profitable to you. Okay, and what is profitable to us is sowing in the spirit. All right, it says, Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own son, for his own soul? It says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his fathers with the angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. All right, so the Lord is going to reward all of us according to what we've been doing. All right, this is Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7, it says, Be not deceived, the heavenly Father is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So the Most High is not mocked. He sees everything that we do. Okay, and according to what we got our mind focused on, that's what we're going to get a reward for. Verse 8, it says, For he that sowed to a flesh, because what you have your mind on, that's what you're going to actually play out. All right, that's what you're going to actually do. All right, the scripture says, You shall know a man by his fruits. You know what a man's thinking by what he says, man. You know what a man believes by his actions. All right, and that's what the Lord is watching. It says, for he that sowed to his flesh out of the flesh reap corruption. So if you're sowing carnal things, you're going to reap corruption, which is death. It says, but he that sowed to the spirit shall the spirit reap life everlasting. But if we keep sowing in the spirit unto the end, because it doesn't matter if you sow in the spirit almost to the end or if you, a little bit. No, you, you got to do this unto the end. The scriptures say, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. I'm going to keep reading. It says, but he that sowed to the spirit shall the spirit reap life everlasting. So we're going to reap life, man. Verse 9 it says, and let us not be weary and well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we're not supposed to be weary in this, in this ministry, in this truth. All right. It doesn't matter if, if, you, if you did a lesson on it already. Do it again, man. All right, we're going to be a broken record until the Lord comes back. All right, let's get this real quick. In Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. It says, I set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. So the Lord said, what? His watchmen, they're never going to hold their peace, man. Day nor night. Don't matter what time it is. When the Lord puts the spirit on us, we got to put in that work. It says, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And the Lord hasn't done that yet. All right, we're not in our kingdom. We're not in our rest yet. So until the Lord comes back and establishes us as a people, we got to continue to teach this word, man. All right, because there's Israelites out there that need to get fed. Okay. Now let me get, um, I'm going to get Ephesians. All right, this is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because we're soldiers, man. All right, and we have to be strong. All right, but we got to fight this battle spiritually. All right, this is not a carnal battle. 
All right. This is uh Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Even though we're in the flesh, our battle is spiritual, man. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the power to the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapons are not carnal, man. We're about to go through Ephesians, the sixth chapter, to see exactly what the weapons of our warfare are. The weapons and the tools the Lord gave us to win and overcome this fight, to overcome this battle. All right, verse five says, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach. All right. So what? We're, 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 we're casting out lies, man. OK. And we're declaring the truth unto the world. Here it is for so many centuries or right, for, for multiple millennia. OK. The lies have been spewed on the earth. Okay, but here in these last days, the Lord has given us this truth. All right, and we're, and we're raising this truth up to the world, man, and telling everybody that they're a liar. All right, and Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to reign. All right, so let's go back to Ephesians. It's Ephesians chapter 6. And verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of the Heavenly Father, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So we have to put on the whole armor, man, because this devil... Let's go ahead and get that in Peter's. This devil doesn't want to see us succeed, man. All right, but the beautiful thing is, Yahweh Shah, who was in us, is stronger than this devil. All right, let's get that real quick. At first John. First John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, You are of the heavenly Father, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And who is in us? Yahweh Shah. This word is in us. The scriptures talk about the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. If this word is being engrafted in you, and this word represents Yahweh Shah, that means Yahweh Shah is being formed within us. And because Yahweh Shah is being form formed within us, we're greater than the forces in this world. We know that the forces in this world is wickedness. All right, but the but the righteous power we serve is greater. So we have nothing to fear. It's first Peter chapter five, verse eight. It says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may desire. This devil's trying to trying to destroy us, trying to get us out this faith. All right, Yahweh Shai told Peter that that Satan seeks to uh, sift them as wheat. Okay, and what we're of the house of David, Peter and David. Uh, Peter, David came back as Peter in the reincarnation, man. All right, so we're of that household. So if it happened to Peter, it's happening unto us as well. All right, it says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. We have to resist this devil and be steadfast in the faith. As long as we cleave unto Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the heavenly father through his son, okay? Nothing can, uh, nothing can prevail against us, man. It says, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We have to keep in mind the same things that we go through is happening to each and every individual brother. All right. Now, what verse was I reading? Ephesians 6. All right. This is Ephesians 6 and verse. Oh, not Galatians. This is Ephesians 6 and verse. All right. 11. Stand against the walls of the devil. Verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. In high places all right so that's what we're battling man these these spiritual forces these wicked demons that try to get us out of this faith man the different thoughts we got to rebuke all right uh the, the wicked elite you know casting spells and on jacob but the scriptures say what there's no enchantment against jacob all right verse 13 it says wherefore take unto you the whole armor of the heavenly father that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand all right, so we have to put on the whole armor. All right, so we can stand in the evil day. Evil means bad times. Bad times are coming. All right, we have to do everything that, that, that we can in our might and our power to be fortified mentally, which means strong, to be able to overcome that, man. All right, because the, the whole world is going to fail. All right, let me fact, let's get this real quick. Now, Isaiah. But we that put our trust in the Lord, we're going to prevail, man. 
So Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 29 it says, He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, He increases strength. That's us. The Lord has given us power and strength. He's rejuvenating us. He re he's revitalizing us, man. Verse 30 says, Even the youths shall faint and be weary. He's talking about on the evil day. Even the young men, men that are 25, 22, 18, all right, men in their 20s, in their, in their, in their prime, strong, they're going to be weak in that day, man. The scriptures say the glory of a young man is his strength. But the scriptures say in that day, they're going to faint. They're going to be weak. It says, um, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, that's us. We're waiting on the Lord, shall renew their strength. The Lord's going to renew our strength. It says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Some brothers are going to get spiritual power and they're going to be literally flying. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint, man. We're going to run and not get tired, man. The Lord is really about to give us this power, man. Okay, but what? We have to be strong in the grace that's in the Lord, like we read in uh, Timothy's. Okay? Like we read in Ephesians 6. Got to be strong during this grace period so what? The Lord can give us that power in due season. This is Ephesians 6 and 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. We have to walk by faith, man. The scriptures say we walk by faith, not by sight. The scriptures also say that without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh, cometh to the heavenly father must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So what? We got to diligently seek the Lord, man. Above all. It says, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. If you have faith, you got that shield of faith. Those fiery darts that the wicked throw out, they're going to be quenched, man. Verse 17, it says, In the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Most High. Verse 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication. Supplication means to prayer. It means to slack It means to beg. Okay? We have to beg the Lord each and every day for mercy. We have to beg each and every day for the Lord to keep His Spirit upon us. All right? It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All right. And we have to watch over our brethren and pray for our brethren as well. All right. I'm going to get this scripture and I'm going to close out on this. Um, this is first Timothy chapter six and 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called. And has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So what? We have to fight the good fight in faith. We're in a spiritual war. We're in a spiritual battle. And we have to continue to fight this fight. And it's a good fight. It's an honorable fight. It says we have to lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold means to hold with your might. Cleave on. And what? We're going to get eternal life. We're on to we were called. The Lord called us unto his heavenly kingdom, man. Okay. And we have been professing this. Amongst many witnesses, and we need to continue to do so. Continue to be steadfast, man. But Lord's will is edifying. Call Allah, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rapakadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who were well. Shalom, Wa Barakim, La Bukhari. Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.